As business owners, we hear all the time about social media. You got to use social media. Are you using social media? Are you doing it right? Oh, you're doing it wrong. Are you using video? How hard is it to do video? Oh, I don't have the time to do video. Well, today we're going to talk about the power of short form video and how to produce them and use them to their maximum effect. Welcome to episode 22 of the Key Hire Small Business Podcast, where we cover issues that help owners in their scale, their small business. I'm Corey Harlock, creator of Key Hire Solutions, where we help Texas business grow with our talent, and I'll be your host today. Our guest today is Corey Walker. Another Corey, spelt the same way. Uh, she's co-author of two books, Instagram for Dummies and Instagram for uh, Business for Dummies. Uh, she owns uh, the Marketing Specialist Agency, where they help small to medium-sized business with their social media strategies and email marketing. She's also a mom of two uh, girls. She's a girl mom, and she loves hiking and the outdoors. So let's welcome Corey to the show, Matt. Hello. <laughs> hey, how are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? Good. Did I get the name of the second book? Is it Instagram for Business for Dummies? Correct. Yes. Perfect. All right. Awesome. And so you're you you know the social media space, and I'm excited. I know there's a lot of questions out there. I mean, even me, heck, it's like, are we doing this right? Uh, everyone you talk to seems to want to tell you yeah, that's not how you do it. I know how to do it better. We know how to do it. Um, results are varied depending on your topic. Some people get the instant gratification. Some people have to earn it. Um, so, you know, what, what is short, let, so, and we're talking specifically about short form uh, videos today. So yes. E explain to us what is a short, short form video and then maybe even what platforms it's kind of working on and being successful on. Sure. So short form video, um, you know, most people are familiar with what like a TikTok video looks like. So it's going to be, um, you know, vertical on your phone like this. And it's usually under about 90 seconds. Um, now, TikTok keeps upping their time. So they went from three. And I think you can even do a 10 minute video at this point. But um, yeah, it's just a quick video that gets to the point really quickly. It's going to be vertical. It's meant to be viewed mostly on your mobile phone. And now most of the platforms offer some sort of way to do short form video. So you have TikTok, you have Instagram Reels, you have Facebook Reels, you have YouTube Shorts, and Pinterest also has a way to do short form video. Um, I've even put some of my, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Instagram Reels onto LinkedIn and they've done well. They don't really have a specific Kind of section for that. I just posted right. as a regular video, um, but that is the gist of short form video. And so, what what is the purpose? What are we trying to accomplish when we're doing these short form videos? Is it? I, I mean, we see this the click. I mean, I I automatically skim over videos now that say you won't believe what happens at the end. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, okay, you want me to watch your boring video right to the end? Because yes. That's so that's a typical hook. It. Yeah. Yeah, that's a typical hook to get you to watch the whole thing. Um, and it's but, always disappointing. Always disappointing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, so um, I'm sorry. Well, I, <laughs> I got okay, a little so what was oh, Sorry, what's the purpose? Like, what are we trying to do with these videos? Are they educational? Oh. Are they, uh, what's the purpose? Yeah, so usually the, the main purpose of these short form videos is to grab your attention. Um, you know, in Instagram, I talk about using Instagram as like a funnel. And so these short form videos or on Instagram would be a reel on TikTok. It's a TikTok. Yeah. Um, we'll call them short form videos just as an all encompassing. Term. Okay, so yeah, short form videos really are to um, grab your attention and kind of move you along to, um, to watch more things. So I like to use them as kind of a, a broader topic that you can funnel down into different areas. Um, so that's why you have these people doing these, these big hooks, getting you to draw in um, and watch more. 
So they're very, they're very much attention seeking and they appeal to what, what I like to call people's uh, goldfish brain at this point, because yeah. you have the attention span of a goldfish and can only watch things for you know 10 to 30 seconds. So they really appeal to people's that little like dopamine hit of getting that, that quick burst of um, action. So when you say we want to get their attention, are we trying to position? So if we're doing like B to C or B to B, or we want to, uh, I well, let me ask you this: Are can can you use them? Are we using them to generate leads? Are we using them to generate or establish ourselves as a um, subject matter expert? Are we using them to drive hits on a website or you know? what can we use them for in terms of like specifically why would i do these videos i want to get their attention but mm -hmm. then once i have their attention what am i trying to do with that information yeah so usually with the short form videos i tell people to have a call to action at the end so you're you're generating that awareness by them watching the video but then um in the caption you might you know on the screen you might have something that says um, read the caption for more information or, you know, send a DM to get this lead magnet type of thing. Okay. So it's usually a way to grab their attention and then lead them somewhere else um, so that they get more information and get to know you better, get to know your product better, that kind of thing. So I think what you're, <laughs> I say this all the time. I, I think I, what I, I think I hear what you thought you said was, um, we're trying to drive them to a, a source of more information. So we're trying to get them to go. So if we're using Instagram, which is your specialty, and I see a, a short that catches my attention, I'm trying to get them to hit a button that gets them off Instagram and onto a platform where I can give them more information or get them to, to sign up for something or... To take out. Yeah. And I mean, specifically within Instagram, there are ways to lead them through without even taking them off Instagram. I mean, maybe it's just follow me for more and then then you get them to follow okay. you on their page and, and see you more often to, you know, up that no like and trust factor. Right. Um, but also going back to what you're saying about subject matter expert, I mean, short form video can be a great way to um, you know, if you're say a service provider, say you're, um, say you're a doctor and you want to talk about your different specialties, you know, you could use that platform to talk about different aspects of what you do, what types of, you know, services that you offer as a doctor. So you can use it as a subject matter expert as well, but usually the purpose of it is to get, get out there get that awareness so that you can move them kind of down the funnel to another area where they can get more information and get in contact with you. All right. So I have a million questions, but I think it moves into our next, the, the next category of mistakes. So okay. um, I do short form video. I know a lot of people, um, well, actually, before we get to the mistakes, let's talk about how most people I know, I always try to kind of put my myself in the mindset of a business owner and saying, I don't have time to do this, mm -hmm. right? This is how much effort, how much more do I have to do? So how, how hard is it to produce these and get them online? Yeah, it's not hard to produce them at all. Um, one of the things that's really popular right now that doesn't take much effort at all um, is doing a video where it's just b-roll so if people aren't familiar with b-roll it's just you know maybe it's me sitting at my desk working at my computer and i just set up my phone on my like a little tripod and i do a video and it's silent i add a little bit of music to it and then i have um i add some text on top of the screen so that could be like a 12 second video you're putting the information on the screen and then at the bottom you say, um, you know, read the caption for more information and then you go into more detail. So the video itself doesn't have to be this huge production with, you know, all these lights and a script and all of that. Um, it can be pretty simple. Um, and the reason I like using short form video is because most of the apps and I know 
more specifically on Instagram that um, the algorithm really favors those. So they're really pushing those because that's kind of the popular thing. And so they're going to be pushing it more than some of the other um, formats, like just a regular, say, photo or something. Right. And if, I, if I'm a business owner and I have a facility, whether it's warehousing or manufacturing or just an office, right, we're, we're doing service, is there value in just taking video of people doing their work or walking through my facility or showing a specific machine how it works or something like that? Absolutely. So one of the big things that does really well in short form video is showing a process. So I don't know if you ever used to watch that show. I think it's still on um, how it's made. Did you ever watch yeah, that show? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So kind of a little funny story. My husband watched, used to watch that show all the time and I would make fun of him. I'd be like, why are you watching this stupid show? It's so boring. They're just showing like potato chips going down an aisle or something. And I'd sit there and then I'd watch the whole thing because I wanted to see the whole process. I love, I love them. I think they're great. Yeah, I, I, and, I am. When I see that stuff, I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. I had, I had never, I didn't know. I had no yeah, idea. Yeah. So it's, I think it's just a natural human response that we want to see something go from beginning to end. So if you are a manufacturer and you have something that you can show the process of, you know, this is how we make our shoes and, you know, you're showing first the leather and then you're showing, you know, you're showing the whole process right. and you can do, um, you know, most of the apps do have, well, really all of them should have their own way of filming this directly in the app. So it makes it pretty easy to both film it, edit it, add text, all of that. So you don't need something really fancy. So what I would say to somebody that was doing a process video is, um, go through the process, take, you know, five seconds of video of each part of it, upload that into whatever app you're going to do it in. And then um, just, you know, add some music and text over it and you're done. So I know for me, it sounds really easy for other people. It might, sure. <laughs> might seem a little bit, but, but once you do it, it's, it's really not that hard. If you can just be mindful you know, if you're really trying to put together um, more of a short form video um, push in your business, just kind of always have have your phone ready to just take a little snippet of um, a video and you never know how you're going to be able to use it. And there's lots of ways and people aren't expecting some masterpiece. They really they like things that are a little bit more raw and real. And I've noticed when things are too perfectly edited people aren't they, they don't like it as much they like seeing you know the real deal yeah and i i know like when i'm watching a video and it's supposed to be like uh, as it happens video no matter what it is and then they switch to a second camera angle i automatically go well this is canned this is yeah. this is yeah. made up switch right i yeah. I'm, I'm with you so i think that's a good segue to um you know, people are out there trying to make it perfect. And I, right. I remember way back when they're like, no, imperfect is perfect for when you go online. People want to see the warts. They want to, they, they, they don't want perfect. They want something that's cool. Yeah, and yeah. Hot. So mm -hmm. what, in your experience in working with people that are kind of trying to put these short form videos together and get them online to maybe showcase, they have a state of the art facility or, they do something really cool or unique, or they just want to show that, hey, we're really good at what we do. Mm -hmm. um, what are the mistakes that you see the common mistakes people make when they're trying to put these videos together and get them out other than not doing the videos? Okay. Uh, you know, what, what yeah, are you that know, is the, That's the first big yeah, mistake. Not but, doing, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so one of the things, um, especially if you're in some kind of facility, you want to be careful of um, not having a lot of background noise. So if you're in a facility that has lots of, you know, just whirring sounds and, and things like that, um, you might want to wear just a little lavalier mic right here. So it's just picking up your voice rather than all that background noise. Um, okay. So that's one thing. So uh, hold on, want... if, I just want to jump in there. So yeah, the, obviously in this video, then you would be talking. 
right? This is this, yes. this isn't like a process video where we're just showing different parts and putting music over it and all that stuff. You're True. kind of indicating you might be doing a short form video where you're explaining something or introducing someone or something or Yes, exactly. Yeah, if you're just doing if you're just doing B-roll where you're going to put music over it, you don't have to worry about any of that. But so there's a the distinction. So there's so what if it's not B-roll and we're actually going to be talking or explaining or presenting something or someone, what is that then called? What do we call that? Uh, a talking head video, I guess. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a distinction, right? Because I, I mean, yeah. we, I, 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 even as we were talking, I was like, oh, that's different because we hadn't talked about using a mic or speaking on these videos, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, if you're doing more of a talking head where you're explaining something about, say, your facility or, you know, whatever it is, um, and you have some background noise. I would definitely get one of those mics and you can get them on Amazon. They're super cheap. Um, so it's worth, worth that little investment. Um, and then make sure you have good lighting. I see some people that have, you know, tons of shadows or, um, if it's just dark, it's just not appealing. Um, so yeah, make sure you have decent lighting. And one really easy thing to do if you don't, um, have a ring light, which, you know, ring lights are super cheap too. Um, but it's just to film so you're facing a window. So the sun is coming on your face. Okay. Um, that's kind of the best lighting that you can get. So, so not with the window at your back. Correct. Because that right. will, yeah. Yeah. That will make you look dark. Got it. Um, so that's, those are two just easy ones that you should always be checking for. Another thing that I've noticed a lot of um, people that are new to this doing is they will upload either photos or they'll do their video in horizontal format. So they'll do it like this. Okay. And then they will upload it to, you know, whatever short form platform they're on. And then when it shows, it has, you know, black on the top and black on the bottom and their videos like this. Right. So it just, it just, it doesn't look good. It shows that they don't completely know what they're doing. <laughs> okay, so, so up long wise, portrait, portrait mode. Yes, kind of. portrait mode. So we, because I guess the apps are, their, their programming is designed to take that style of video versus the other. And if you have these big black spots with a tiny little video in the middle, like you said, people are gonna go, what were they thinking? Why? Yeah, okay. yeah, I mean, people are just, they're used to, watching in this way and, you know, scrolling, scrolling. So, um, right. yes. So that is another thing. Um, if you are going to do any kind of talking head video, um, make sure you have the captions on so that, uh, people can, you know, read what you're saying because a lot of people watch with the sound off. Right. So it's really helpful to have that. Mm -hmm. And it's good for, you know, anybody, if you want to be more inclusive to people that are hard of hearing, it's also, Good to have that option okay. so that they can read what you're saying. Uh, so that's another one that I see a lot of people miss. Um, let's see. Another one is, is not getting to the point. So you don't, people have very little attention spans. And if it's not something that they're deeply interested in knowing the full process of, or the full, you know, talking about your, your manufacturing plant, um, they're going to scroll away. So if you have something kind of longer that you want to talk about, you might want to break it up into three different videos. Okay. So, um, if you're talking about say the features of something, we'll just feature one feature and talk a little bit about that and then do another video on the other one. And that also provides you with more opportunity for content. So, um, yeah, so those are, those are some of the, the major things that I see people, making the mistake of uh, doing in their videos. Or so not to doing. jump in on your last point, you talked about getting to the point and what is, what is the kind of ideal length of a short form video to maximize people's attention span, get them to the end where you have your call to action and have them take that action. What's, what's our time frame? What do we want to be? Um, I mean, a lot of my videos are like 12 seconds, but okay. if you're going to do a talking head video, I mean, that's really hard to say anything in that amount of time. 
So I would say, you know, 30 to 60 seconds. It's huh? short. I mean, it's short form yeah. video. So um, you want to just kind of appeal to get their get their interest. It's supposed to be an awareness video. Remember to kind of move them to a different place. It's not educational, really. We're, we're just trying to start, get our hook in them mm -hmm. to, to want them to continue the conversation. We're not having the conversation with this video. Right. Right. Yeah. It's really just, it's, it's to be used to pique their interest and get them and curious. Move. Yes. Yes. So you brought something up about if you, if you're, you're doing a talking head video and you have three points you want to make, do three videos. So this is a, an opportunity for someone to say, we can maximize my time. So if we're doing three videos, you want them to be 30 seconds to one minute each. Really, we could sit there for two minutes to three mm -hmm. minutes, make a video and chop it. Yep. So, but if we know we're going to do that, is there anything you would want to do between each point? So it's not just you start with your intro, then you do a point and then you roll into the second point. So when you chop it, you just show up and you're talking about something and they're like, Kind of feel like about? I missed something here, you know? Yeah, no, I would definitely, while you're filming it, you could film one long video and chop it, as you said. Um, but what might be more natural for you to to have that stop stopping point is to just, you know, you can you can be right there and do your your two minutes, but film it, film you know your first point, stop the video film the next one. So you are, you do want to treat them as three separate things because there might be someone that only watches your third video and they're going to be like, what the heck is he talking about? Right. Um, so, so yeah, you want to treat them as three, but absolutely. If you're, you know, ready to go, you got your nice shirt on, you got your hair done, do them all at once and be done, batch them out. That's, that's another really good tip for people is if you feel like you don't have a lot of time, think about, 10 videos that you want to do and just, you know, batch them out in one day. And schedule um, I, an hour and just bang them out. Yeah. Yeah. So, is and it, that's, so is that's, it okay? We talked about that want to be perfect thing, right? So I, um, is it okay if in every video I'm wearing the same outfit? So people are like, man, this guy just filmed them all at the same day or, and, or, you know, what if I stutter or stammer or make a mistake in the video? Do I need to stop and go again and get it perfect? Yeah, so it's perfectly okay to wear the same thing. In fact, I have there's some uh, social media marketers that I follow that purposely wear the same. So there's one lady, I think her name is Pink Sparrow, and she always wears the same pink uh, suit. And so every video you see her and she's in this pink suit and it's become her, like, that's how you identify her. It's like, oh, it's Pink Sparrow because she's in her pink suit. Right. Um, but one thing that people need to get kind of out of their heads is thinking that people are going to watch every one of your videos. So they're going to notice and say, Oh, he's wearing that white shirt again. Oh my gosh. You know, it's like people don't notice as much of that stuff as you would think because they might see one video from you and then they might not see another one for three weeks. So right. they're not going to necessarily notice that you wore the same shirt and people know, you know, that you're, you're batching things out and, and, as long as your message is good and what your content is, they're not going to care. Um, if you stumble, you know, the nice thing about it is it's not live. You, you can cut right. and, and do another version, or if it's just a quick flub, then just laugh it off and keep going. Okay. So it's up to you. Yeah. All right. I just, I, I know me and I, I'm sure there's people that they're like me, they're, they're going to want to like try to make it perfect and like bring change of clothes. And oh, I, I, I don't like the way that sounded. And then eventually, especially doing podcasts and things now, you know, I'm screwing stuff up all the time and that and I are like, ah, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna, let's just post it. Like it's, it's just all get right. it done. Yeah. For sure. um, and then one of the other things I want to go way back to earlier in the conversation, you were talking about um, if you're using a specific platform that they will have their video editors built into the platform and you can build the video and all like you can put your music and your captions and everything within that. And I, I just wanted to kind of get you to talk a little more about that because I wonder if there's not some people that are like, 
I don't have to have time to do this video and then get on my computer and edit it and chop it and put all this stuff on it and editing software is so complicated. And then I watch my daughter put together like my summer vacation TikTok video. And she's like, oh, I just made this video while we were sitting here. And she played, it's yeah. like a five minute long video with headlines and names and pieces. Of, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? Like, <laughs> So help us understand. Yeah. And, and I guess the big question is if I make a video in Insta, Instagram, okay, then I pull that video and use it in other, other platforms as well. Yes. Okay. So let me, that was a multi-part question. Okay. So let me answer your first question um, regarding the editing. So um, I don't do a lot in YouTube or Pinterest. So I can't speak to those shorts. But I know on TikTok and Instagram, for sure, you can go from filming it directly in the apps. And then um, I know both of them have ways that you can um, you can either film it right there and then just add the text and everything. Or you can upload. So if you have, say you wanted to make a video like we were talking about before with the, the processes. Right. And so you have five little videos and you want to upload all of them. So if they're on your camera roll, you can just upload those within TikTok or Instagram. And then they have little um, kind of bars that you can clip the each so, video. So I can clip it and join them and make sure you I can clip it. Okay, cool. Yeah. You can even um, ar arrange them differently. So say you uploaded it and one video got uploaded at the wrong point in the process, you can you know scoot it and, and move it around. Just like a drag um, and drop type thing? Yeah, yeah, you can, you can move it around. Um, you can add music directly in there. So there's, um, there's all types of music. I know, um, I'm not sure on TikTok, but I know on Instagram, if you have a professional, uh, if you have a professional type of profile, sometimes they'll restrict some of the more popular uh, songs because Copy. of licensing. Um, but you can you can get around that by being a creator, and so then yeah. you can get your Taylor Swift and all that. I, stuff. Get, I, I think the thing there is if you're trying to use it to sell something, you yes. can't use it because it's copywritten and licensed and it's not, then you would have to pay for it or whatever. But if you're just using it as a fun thing, fun thing, yeah. it's, it's, it's less restricted. Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, you can add music, you can add text overlays on top of it. Uh, you can add filters, you can add uh, your voice overlaid. So if you did, say you did a process video and you filmed it all silently, you can add your voice over it saying, this is the process of making okay. shoes. Uh, so you can do that all within the app. So really you, you don't need anything besides your phone and whichever app you choose. It's got all the editing that you really Perfect. need okay. right in there. Um, all right. Yes. So what was, let's see, what was part, part two of the question? Was, now, once I created that video, let's say I created an Instagram, am I able, able to rip oh, it yes. on Instagram and use it on different platforms now? Or do I okay. need to recreate it in every platform? Okay. So with, um, you can download it from either one. Um, but I will say if you make a video in TikTok, and then you download it and it has the TikTok symbol on it, which it will. Okay. And you put it on Instagram. Instagram does not like that. Okay. And so they will downgrade your video. So they won't play it as much, supposedly. I mean, that's they've said that in their terms and conditions that they don't like that logo. Um, so oh. some people will, um, I think there's a way to download it before you publish it. And so you'll still have you'll have the video. Right. Um, and then there's also some ways, um, there are some apps that you can get to scrub the logo off of it. So you can make the video in TikTok, download it, and then and then run it through this thing and it takes that logo off. And I can't remember what it's called, but there are what those about, things. What about on Instagram, same thing? So Instagram, I don't know if TikTok cares if it's got the Instagram logo or not, but you can download it from Instagram. 
Um, they've gotten a little bit better for a while. They wouldn't let you keep the audio from it. So it was super annoying because you'd have the full video. It's completely edited. And then you download it and it had no audio, which okay. if it was just something that had music background, isn't really a problem because you could upload it into TikTok and add music back in. But right. if it's a talking head thing or a voiceover, that's like a problem. So I think what the conclusion to come to is pick your platform. Like test it, see what platform you're getting the most out of and then create your videos in that one. And then if you're going to download it and repurpose it um, to the other platforms, that that's repurpose it to the platforms that aren't as as big for you or not your focus. Well, there is there is a, a C option, okay. <laughs> which awesome. is. Um, if you know that you are really going to use this video on several platforms and you want to kind of keep it clean, you can use, um, you can edit it in a different software completely. So a lot of people will use CapCut and that is a video editing software. So you would, instead of uploading all your, you know, mini clips to whichever, you know, Instagram, TikTok, right. whatever, you would put it in CapCut and then they have all of the editing and even more. It's it's it can be a little bit overwhelming, um, but Is they it have on your phone as well, Corey. You can do. Yeah, you can do CapCut on your phone. I usually use it on my computer because it's yeah, it's just easier for me to edit on my computer, but it is on your phone as well. Okay. Um, I think it's like seven ninety nine a month or something. It's not very expensive. Okay. Um, but if you do that, then you can download a clean version with no logos and you can upload it wherever you want. So it, it kind of just depends if you're more, if you're the type of person you're like, no, I am all in on TikTok, which right. I wouldn't recommend right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> but that's another conversation. Um, then, you know, you could just build it in there, be done. But if you, if you really feel like, no, I'm going to use this on TikTok and Instagram and Pinterest and YouTube shorts, then you might want to go ahead and, and, and edit it elsewhere. So it's okay. clean. All right. So let's get into the help version of this conversation. So uh, other than calling you, if someone's listening to us thinking, okay, I, I got to up my, my shorts game, or I need to start a, a, a short form video program here, mm -hmm. or I've been doing it and I'm, Sounds like I'm not doing it correctly. Give, give us the kind of jumping off point. What are the top two or three recommendations you would make to someone, a business owner right now? Like, okay, I want to, I want to use this. I want to use it effectively. I want to, to um, find a purpose to, to put, put this energy into and not just kind of, you know, use the scattergun approach. Yes. What should I, what are the first things I need to be thinking about? Okay, so um, usually when I work with someone, I'll have them develop what I call content pillars or content buckets. And that is picking maybe three to five topics or way you're gonna, ways you're gonna present your information. Um, and it, it's really gonna make a good structure for how you create videos. And it, it does make it easier once you have these in mind. So a content bucket plan might be, I'm going to do um, videos that are strictly, say, awareness. And so you'll have some that are just um, talking a little bit like high level about your product. And then you might say, I'm going to do my second bucket is going to be all UGC. So we didn't talk about that, but user generated content. Some of the um, bigger brands will uh, use influencers or they just have people, they find people that are using their product and they ask them, you know, is it okay if I repost your video? So that might be another option for, for some of these companies that they notice, oh, well, there's, there's people on TikTok already talking about my product and they're doing a really good job. So why don't I, you know, take some of their videos with their permission and use those. So that might be one of your content buckets and it makes it a lot easier for you because you don't even have to do the video. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, you might have another one that is, um, you know, one of your subject matter experts at your company that's talking specifically about features, or you might have somebody that talks about um, different ways that you could use your product. So if it's something, right. say if it's um, a certain type of food, you might have someone that talks about 
um, you know, 10 different recipes that you could make with that food, stuff like that. Right. So the main point is come up with those three to five um, topics or ways you want to present the information. And then once you have those, those buckets or pillars, go underneath each of those and think about, okay, well, what, what kind of video could I do in this style or that fulfills this pillar? Um, so that's going to give you a structure. And then once you have that structure, you can, you can take it onto more of a um, calendar and map it out of, you know, when you want to post these. So you might say, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to post a short form video every Tuesday and Thursday, right? And so you're going to look at your content pillars and say, okay, are there certain days that I want to do, you know, this type of video and this type of video? And then you can structure that out. And then once you have that plan together, uh, you might think about, okay, well, how can I batch this out? So I already know I want five videos that's going to be for my subject matter expert. So why don't I put um, he or she, why don't I schedule a day with them and just have them knock out 10 videos? Okay. And then you can just kind of, you know, plug them in. So that if someone wants to be really organized about how they create a plan and they want to be consistent, um, that's the way I would tell people to put it together. Okay. What about um, we're doing something new in the business, we're getting a new piece of equipment, or uh, we're, we just started a new program, we're rolling something out, we're uh, celebrating someone's 10 year anniversary with us. These things that you know might not fit under one of your buckets, but it's a it's a noteworthy uh, occasion or happening within the business. Is it worth documenting that and kind of putting it out? Oh, there? for sure. Yeah, and I mean these these buckets are more for your use to to generate ideas and give you structure. But I'm all for if something really cool is happening in your business, by all means, you know, celebrate that, promote it, all of that. So definitely. Very cool. Um, any final thoughts on what, what we, we need to be doing? I think what we need to be doing is starting short form. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, maybe can you just give us a quick hit on how to measure it? Like, how do we know if this, this is working? How do we know if the juice is worth the squeeze? Like I'm dedicating six hours a month or eight hours a month to getting this stuff online. Yeah. Is it worth my time? Yeah. So I would say um, all of the apps, whichever one you're going to use, they all have ways that you can track your uh, performance of the videos. Um, now on, I know on Instagram, for instance, you would need to have a professional account. So if you're just putting them on your personal account, I don't think that it's going to show you, um, that information because you need the professional dashboard. Um, so what I would say is if you are using a solid call to action on those videos, um, what you're going to want to look for is a, are, are my videos getting any watches at all? Right. What, what is the watch time that people are watching it? Are they, you know, if, is it the first three seconds and they're out or are they staying for the whole thing? So right. if you find some videos where people, you know, it's a 35 second video and people are staying till the end, then that's a really good sign that they're interested in what you're saying. And so do more of those. Okay. Um, and then finally, whatever your call to action is, look at, um, are people, you know, clicking on that? Are people going to that site? Are they, they requesting a demo or, you know, whatever your call to action is, track those um, from the videos and see if they're taking part of that. Um, okay. Yeah. And, and I would say too, don't expect immediate results like the first couple weeks. Like give it, you know, give it a good three months and see how you're doing. Um, but definitely look at the results, look at the videos that are performing best and see, okay, what is it about this video that people are really, you know, glomming onto and try and make more videos like that. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for all that information. It's been very helpful for me and I'm sure for others. So Corey, if people are listening to this and thinking, man, I need to talk to her more or I need to, I need some of her information or guidance or help, how can we get in touch with you? Sure. So you can always go to my website, which is the marketing specialist.com right there. Um, if you uh, are specific, 
That's very bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you want more tips on Instagram in general, I am at Corey C. Walker on Instagram. So I post things all the time and they're all sorts of tips on how to use Instagram better for your business. Um, and then finally, I am going to be giving away, let's see, what did I call it here? Uh, 20 best practices for short form videos. And that will be in the liner notes, um, a link to that. And that's a yeah. free resource people can And that's download. a free resource. It's just 20 tips for um, making really great short form videos. Very um, cool. And we'll we'll yeah. get that a link to directly to that in the liner notes here. And as well, show us your books. We know you got two books and we'll put some yes. links. To, so if people want to grab those and uh, up their game using your books, we can do that too. Do you have any yeah, handy? So you know what? This is, this is actually one of the older ones. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, so Instagram for dummies. And then there is, I got all my, all my newer editions are over on the other side of the room <laughs> and Instagram for business for dummies. Cool. And right. um, they're both available on Amazon. Awesome. And we'll put links to those in the liner notes as well. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. I appreciate you carving out some time to hang out with us today and give us uh, some, some useful information on how to up our short form video game. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thanks so much. There she is, Miss Corey Walker. Uh, so, hey, thanks for tuning into the Small Business Podcast. If you got value out of today's episode and want to keep up to date on our new content, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you prefer to listen to your podcast, you can find us on Apple, Spotify, or wherever your favorite platform is by searching the Key Hire Small Business Podcast. If you'd like to learn more about working with Key Hire and how we can help your small business grow, you can schedule a meeting uh, with us on our website. Uh, we're a help first organization. So we guarantee there's no selling, no weirdness, just help. Thanks for listening. I'm Corey Harlock. And until next time, stop grinding, start growing.